the first thing to do in regression is to select the correct model. This becomes important because one of the first assumptions of the Gauss-Markov theorem is that the model is linear in its parameters and is correctly specified. Now the thinking behind this is that there exists a real model which explains the population such as y i equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 i plus beta 2 x 2 i plus beta 3 x 3 i plus sigma i. However, this model is not known to us and hence we have to come up with a model that reflects the true population model. However, how do we really come up with this model is the question and in coming up with this model we can make certain errors, <laughs> hence unless our model is correctly specified, we will be violating the Gauss-Markov theorem and hence our OLS estimates will not be blue, that is best linear and unbiased. So what are the various kind of problems that we face while coming up with the model? There are basically four types of specification errors that we will be covering. Firstly, underfitting, that is omission of a relevant variable. For example, if I talk about investment in a particular country and we ignore the central bank rate then we are committing an error of underfitting. Similarly, there is an error of overfitting that is inclusion of unnecessary variables. For example, while talking about the evolution of debt in the Eurozone countries, if you talk about the GDP growth rate of Namibia, it's probably taking it a bit too far and hence inclusion of unnecessary variables is being done, which is called overfitting. Thirdly, it is very important to take the correct functional form of the model. For example, if it is a log linear model in reality, whereas we actually run a linear model, then we would be committing this kind of a specification error. This is dealt with more in the module on functional forms. The fourth and most obvious kind of specification error is measurement error, and we would not deal with it explicitly in this module. Let us first talk about underfitting of a model. We commit a problem of underfitting if suppose the original population model was y i equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus sigma i. However, we omit the variable x 2 and the model that we actually run is y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 x 1 plus sigma i dash. Note that this is the only case of violation of the Gauss-Markov assumptions that produces a bias in the OLS estimate. When we actually run the model y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 x 1 plus sigma dash i, we will obtain an estimate of gamma 1. However, the expected value of gamma 1, which should actually be equal to beta 1, will not be equal to beta 1, but will be equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 into b21, where b21 is the slope coefficient of a regression which plots x2 as a function of x1. Hence what is happening is that gamma 1 which should only capture the effect of x1 on yi is now capturing the effect of x2 also. Hence there is both a direct effect which is the value given by beta 1 and an indirect effect which is given by the value of beta 2 into b21. For example think of it very heuristically. If beta 2 is greater than 0 that is if x2 has a positive effect on yi and if b21 is also greater than 0, that is x2 and x1 are positively correlated, that is when x1 increases, x2 also increases and vice versa. In which case the value of gamma 1 that we will be getting will be biased upward because both beta 2 and b21 are positive and hence gamma 1 which is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 into b21 will also show an upward bias. Similarly, if beta 2 is less than 0 and b21 is greater than 0, in which case gamma 1 will also capture the negative effect that x2 has on yi, in which case estimate of gamma 1 will have a downward bias, that is expected value of gamma 1 will be lesser than beta 1. It is not only the slope variable which will thus show a bias, even the intercept variable that is delta will be biased. Expected value of delta, which under the Gauss-Markov theorem should be equal to alpha, will actually be equal to alpha plus beta 2 into the mean of x2 minus b21 times the mean of x1, which is certainly not equal to alpha unless both mean of x2 and mean of x1 is 0 or mean of x2 is 0 and b21 equal to 0. This has several corollaries. 
the first one is that since the OLS estimators delta and gamma 1 are not unbiased, hence they are also inconsistent. You would remember from elementary econometrics that an estimator that is biased is also inconsistent, but the vice versa is not true. Also note that even if x1 and x2 are not correlated, that is the slope coefficient of b21 equal to 0, then even though the slope coefficient of the underfitted model that is gamma 1 is unbiased, but the intercept coefficient delta will still be biased unless the mean of x2 is also equal to 0. In such a case when b21 equal to 0, though the slope coefficient of gamma 1 is not able to pick up the effect of x2, hence the entire effect of x2 shows up in the intercept coefficient delta. Also note that the variance of the error term in the underfitted model that is sigma dash i square is not equal to the error variance of the original population model which is sigma i square which given correct specification is also equal to the true population variance of the error term which is sigma square hence the error in this case is also biased also note that the variance of the slope coefficient that is sigma gamma 1 square is equal to sigma beta 1 square plus a term which eventually turns out to be positive in all cases. Hence what we are saying is that the variance of the slope coefficient in the underfitted model is actually more than the variance of the slope coefficient in the true population model. Hence what this leads to is a flatter normal distribution, hence wider confidence intervals. Hence the T and F tests that we do for hypothesis testing become invalid and the power of the test for rejection or acceptance of the null becomes less. Hence there are several major problems that we face with an underfitted model. Compared to this, overfitting a model that is inclusion of an irrelevant variable doesn't seem to have as serious problems, which of course is not an invitation to include irrelevant variables. Consider a population model which is y i equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 plus sigma i. However, let us include an irrelevant variable x 2 such that the regression that we actually run is y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 x 1 plus gamma 2 x 2 plus sigma dash i. The consequences of this overfitting is that OLS estimators are still unbiased. That is expected value of delta equal to alpha, expected value of gamma 1 equal to beta 1 and expected value of gamma 2 equal to beta 2 which in the original population model is actually equal to 0. Hence when we run this regression we are expecting that gamma 2 will most probably turn out to be 0. Similarly estimate of the variance of error term is also unbiased which was a problem that we saw with the underfitting of a model. In this case expectation of sigma dash i square equal to expectation of sigma i square equal to the actual population variance of error term which is sigma square. Hence the T and F tests which were invalid in case of underfitting of a model are now valid. The only problem with overfitting of a model is that the OLS estimators delta and gamma i are inefficient. That is they do not have minimum variance in the class of linear and unbiased estimators. Hence expectation of sigma gamma 1 square which is the variance of gamma 1 is greater than the variance of beta 1 square and the variance of delta is greater than the variance of alpha. This is essentially a problem of multicollinearity because the new variable x2 that we have introduced in the model will have a certain degree of collinearity with x1 and hence our new model will suffer from the problem of multicollinearity. Multicollinearity is dealt with in a separate module but one thing that we should understand from this is that even the OLS estimators are unbiased and estimate of variance of error terms is also unbiased but we will face a problem in not being able to talk about the effect of x1 on y1 individually. The coefficient gamma1 of x1 will also capture the effect of gamma2 that we are talking about. However, if our objective is only to make predictions based on this model, then since r square will obviously go up with the inclusion of an extra variable, hence overfitting doesn't become a problem if you are talking only about prediction of yi's. Now that we have talked about both underfitting and overfitting of a model, we should talk about the remedies. Firstly, let us talk about the remedies to underfitting and also to wrong functional forms. 
Let us consider a population model which is y i equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus sigma i. However, let us omit the variable x 2 and talk about the actual regression that we run which will be y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 x 1 plus sigma dash i. The only way that we will talk about of detecting underfitting is an examination of the residuals. So if we compare the two models, the original one which includes x1 and x2 and the one that we actually run which includes only x1, the difference that we will see is that sigma dash i will cover not only the effect of sigma i but also of x2. The actual functional form that sigma i dash will show is that sigma i dash equal to beta 2 x2 plus sigma i. So if we see any kind of trend between the error term sigma i dash and x2 which is the variable that we have omitted then we will be sure that we have converted the problem of underfitting. However this is a difficult thing to do because we really do not have any idea of which is the variable that we are omitting and hence the two tests that we will actually talk about are MWD test and Ramsey's reset. First about the MWD test. This is used to differentiate between a log linear functional form and a linear functional form. Hence this has nothing really to do with underfitting but is a choice between two functional forms. What we do in this is first to run both the linear and the log linear functional forms. The linear one becomes a null hypothesis that is y i equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus sigma i. The log linear functional form becomes our alternative hypothesis or h1 which is log y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 log x 1 plus gamma 2 log x 2 plus sigma i dash. Then what we do is to obtain the estimated y values for both linear and log linear models. For the linear model it is y i hat and for the log linear model let us represent it as log y i star. These are of course the predicted yi based on the values of x1 and x2 and not the actual yi's which would be the same in case of both the functional forms. Given that we have obtained these estimated yi's for both the models, define a new variable zi which will be equal to log of yi dash wherein yi dash is the yi obtained from the linear model minus log of yi star which we have previously defined as the estimated yi from the log linear model. Then run the following regression which is yi equal to pi plus theta xi plus omega zi. zi is the one that we have just defined, xi are the original xi's and pi is of course the interceptor. If sigma is significantly different from 0, that means that yi is dependent on the zi which is log of y i hat minus log of y i star which basically means that the difference between converting the linear estimated y i's into the log form and the original log y i's is significant and hence our choice of taking linear versus the log linear model is also significant and hence we should not have taken the linear model in the first case. Hence, if in this case the sigma is significantly different from 0, then we reject h0, that is we reject the linear functional form and we accept the log linear functional form. There is also a corresponding way of taking the log linear form as h0 and the linear form as h1, but we will not get into the details and you could probably practice that on your own if you are interested. The second and more important test that we really need to focus on is Ramsey's reset. In this case take the original population function as y i equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus sigma i. Let us omit the variable x 2 and come up with y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 x 1 plus sigma i dash. In this case observe as previously we have talked about that sigma i dash is a function of x2 which we had previously defined as beta 2 x2 plus sigma i. Since it's a function of x2 it will also be a function of our estimated y i hats. Hence if we see any significant trend between the y i hat and sigma i dash then we can say that there is some problem of underfitting or of the model being incorrect. So what we do in Ramsey's reset 
is to first run the original regression which is y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 x 1 plus sigma i dash and obtain r naught square which is the r square from this regression. Then note down all the estimated y i's that is y i hats. What we need to do is to include y i hats in our regression model. Since we cannot include y i hat directly because then y i would simply be equal to y i hat. Hence we include a proxy for y i hat which can be y i hat square plus y i hat q. Hence we run a modified regression which is y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 x 1 plus gamma 2 y i hat square plus gamma 3 y i hat cube plus sigma dash i. Then we take the original one and say that there are linear restrictions of gamma 2 equal to gamma 3 equal to 0 and hence we simply run a test for the validity of these linear restrictions. So we take r n square minus r naught square divided by 2. 2 is the number of linear restrictions because gamma 2 equal to gamma 3 equal to 0 divided by 1 minus r n square wherein r n square is the r square value of the unrestricted model divided by n minus k. If the r n square is significantly different from r naught square then we can reject the initial model and hence we can say that our error term sigma i dash is a function of our estimated y that is y i hat in which case we can assume that we are suffering from an underfitting problem. Hence Ramsey's reach set in case we are able to reject the restricted model then we can say that we have a problem of underfitting. When we talk about overfitting suppose the population function is y i equal to alpha plus beta 1 x 1 plus sigma i and we include the unnecessary variable of x2 and come up with the regression of y i equal to delta plus gamma 1 x 1 plus gamma 2 x 2 plus sigma i dash. The only remedy of overfitting then would be to remove x2. However, when we are practically running this regression model, how do we realize which of the x's is the one that we have to remove? In this case, it's a problem of dropping a variable. It cannot be stressed enough that simply dropping a variable because it has a low level of significance is not the right way to go about it. If a variable deserves to be in a model because there is some theoretical underpinning which explains its inclusion, then that variable should be included in the model whether or not it comes out to be significantly different from zero or not. Hence, with this caution in mind, the way to go about remedying overfitting is that if we suspect that a particular xi is irrelevant, then we look at its t statistic which is the value of that coefficient gamma 2 divided by the standard error of gamma 2. This value if it is less than the critical t value which we might have taken at the 95% confidence interval if it is less then we can reject x2 as a variable and say that x2 does not belong to this model. However if we suspect that both x1 and x2 are irrelevant then we put a linear restriction of gamma 1 equal to gamma 2 equal to 0 and then test for validity of the linear restriction. Since we have already dealt with linear restrictions, we would just restate the formula which is r square of the unrestricted model minus r square of the restricted model divided by m which is the number of linear restrictions divided by 1 minus r square of the unrestricted model divided by n minus k wherein n is the sample size and k is the number of parameters. If this value comes out significantly different from 0 under the f distribution with m and n minus k degrees of freedom in the numerator and denominator respectively, then we can say that x1 and x2 are both irrelevant and hence should be dropped from the model. So the only thing that we are doing in remedying overfitting is to figure out whether a variable is significantly different from 0 or not. To conclude our study of model selection, it must be emphasized that the model has to be based on a certain theory. The way to go about it is to look at the theory, come up with a model and then test the model. We must not reverse this process and first look at the numbers, run the model and then try to say that this is the correct model. Because that will lead either to the problem of overfitting or of underfitting. 
Hence with this we conclude our study of model selection.